Sup guys, Toby here, aka Rocky's Reef. So in this episode of Real Results, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the NIOS 220 skimmer. Now this is completely unbiased, there's no sponsorship, there's nothing that I'm gaining from this. I just really wanted to share my experience of running this skimmer for the last eight, nine months uh, to a year. Um, to really help others out there and to kind of offer up some advice. Some of the good points and some of the bad points about the skimmer or things that you need to watch out for when considering to buy it. So let's do this. said I'm going to take you through my own personal experiences with the NIOS Quantum 220 skimmer. Now for those of you that don't know NIOS falls under the umbrella of Ecotech Marine so with that comes an expectation on quality and performance and I really feel that this skimmer definitely does deliver. The design has been thought about with its conical shape the way the skimmer cup releases and clamps down on an o-ring is very satisfying and they've also got a very unique dome underneath the um, skimmer lid that helps the uh, skimmer collect in the cup itself and also you're running Niles's own motor obviously which is a branch of Ecotech so there's a certain reliability and expectation that you have with the motor as well so the fact that this has been designed by a branch of Ecotech gives the skimmer the performance it does so I'm not going to go through an unboxing, there's loads of unboxings of the NIOS range on uh, YouTube, so by all means go and check those out. So what I'm going to go through, as I say, is, is kind of my own experiences in the performance of the NIOS 220, and also how it's been running, and we're looking at uh, like nine months to a year since I first started using it. It is definitely a powerful skimmer. Um, the way it spins the bubbles using it's, it's like a fan-like manifold, they call it the twister, really maximizes the amount of time that the organic material in the water has in contact with the air, which helps it create a really dark skimmate once it comes and collects into the cup. It also has titanium screws, so there's very little chance of corrosion going to be happening. Um, and it's also made from a really robust thick plastic, probably a acrylic. Um, and it really gives you a sense of quality when you're handling you can definitely feel that it's definitely been thought about so the pump itself it is only an ac style pump so there's no real control over how fast the motor is spinning but you are able to adjust the water levels and also the air intakes and really create that ideal skim for your tank this has worked absolutely fine for me i did um, look at the octopus um, skimmers because they do have that DC control. But the way this skimmer has been designed and has been built, it don't feel it really needs that because the amount of control that you do get from um, the water level control and also the air intake as well. And it produces a really, really dark skimmer. And I'm really happy with how that performs. However, because of the amount of micro bubbles this does make, I have found the skimmer can be fairly sensitive Something simple like putting the tank on feed mode so the water level in the sump increases can cause the skimmer to boil over and overflow, especially earlier on in those first few months. That's something that I definitely notice. And when you're feeding small particle foods such as reefroids, this also tends to get the skimmer to um, go mad as well. So something that's easily avoidable, just when you put the tank onto feed mode, you just turn the skimmer off and let the other filtration, once feed mode's turned back on, take out those small particles out of the water for maybe about 10 minutes and turn the skimmer on. And I found that works absolutely fine. So you can either do that through a controller like an Apex or a GHL, or just like I do, just manually switch it off the wall and just wait 10 minutes and just turn it back on. So with my current fish stock and rate of feeding, I'm having to empty this giant cup about once a week and I do about a deep clean maybe once a month. 
um, which is fairly standard. I wouldn't expect any more than that unless you've got a heavily stocked tank, which mine is eventually going to be. I've only cleaned the motor, so the Niles motor in there. I've only cleaned it once so far in the past eight months to a year, and I haven't noticed any drop in performance at all. So um, after I cleaned it, I didn't see the skimmer. So I'm like, oh yes, I can skim properly now. It was pretty consistent, fairly consistent all the way through, which is really good, which kind of shows the quality of the motor that you are getting. Something I did notice after a clean is that you do get the micro bubbles kind of escape um, into the rest of the sump and sometimes into the tank itself. It's only a few um, and it's now actually started to come down um, as the tank has got older, so there's more nutrients in the water and also as the skim has got more and more embedded. So definitely something to watch out for, um, but something that will kind of clear itself up over time. So with the giant skimmer cup itself, one of the things that I do find slightly challenging is with the hose or little uh, outlet tube you do get, the um, kind of connector for that is really wedged underneath the actual skimmer cup itself. So I actually leave the tube on there and just wrap it around the skimmer head. But I know a couple of people don't really like the aesthetic look of that, especially if you've got more of a, a show some. Um, so sometimes getting that rubber tube onto uh, the fitting underneath the cup can be a little bit difficult because they don't leave you a lot of room. Um, but as I say, I leave mine on all the time um, and just wrap it around uh, the cup and it's not been an absolute issue. So to kind of wrap up, I would say that the Niles Quantum 220 is a great skimmer and it is really reliable once you get used to its sensitive side, but is it worth the price tag? So with the price tag for the 220, you're looking about five, six hundred pounds. Compared to other brands and skimmers that I would have needed for the size of my tank, it was very mid-range and because of that it is worth every single penny as it does such a great job at removing the organics from the tank. In fact it actually does a too good a job because as you know I'm having to dose nitrates back into the tank. So the only downside I would say is its sensitivity so due to the amount of micro bubbles that it does create and the way it's been designed um, it does have a tendency as I say to overflow when you're feeding small particles um, or the water level in the sun rises past um, the purple cube. But in my opinion, I'm, I'm very happy to trade off a little bit of pain for a super efficient skimmer. So let me know in the comments below what your experiences of a NIOS skimmer have been, not necessarily the 220, and whether you've enjoyed it or whether you've had to replace it because you weren't able to get to grips with it. And also let me know what your thoughts are on other skimmers as well that are out there in the market and, and what you're using. Thanks for watching. So 